Live from the studios of KMBY Television in Monterey, California, it's Monterey On Tonight with Gary Morris. Three hours of your favorite classic music videos from yesterday and today. Telephone and in-studio guests. And a few surprises along the way. And now, here's your host, Gary Morris. Well, hi and good evening out there in TV land. This is Monterey on Tonight, and I'm Gary Morris. We're going to be here for the next three hours with some of your favorite music videos, hopefully. And we're going to have three guests on tonight. Hopefully you'll stay tuned and watch each interview. We have one on each hour. And now I'd like to introduce you to my co-host for tonight. This is Lindsay Delos Reyes. Reyes. Did I get it right? Yes, yes, okay. you did. That's right. It's not an easy name to say. No, it's not. A lot of people have a hard time with that name. You say it. Lindsay Delos Reyes. I'm not really good myself. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Delos Reyes is my co-host tonight. And this is show number six. We've been doing this for the last six weeks. And hopefully we're going to be around for another six weeks. Hopefully. We don't know. We're just taking it one week at a time. Lindsay and I met last week at the KMBY 87th birthday anniversary for the radio station down on Canary Row. And you were there with your boyfriend. Boyfriend. Yes. She was there with her boyfriend, who is going to be a guest tonight on the show, Frankie James. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear all about what he does in the music industry. And you know, before we went on the air, I asked Lindsay, well, do you want to talk about what you do in real life? And she said, well, it's not a real fascinating kind of thing, <laughs> but tell everybody in TV land, Lindsay, what you do. So I grow, mostly grow orchids a lot. And uh, let's see, I have over 100 different orchids that I grow in my house. 100 different ones. Yes, a lot of exotic, rare species, and as well as common types, indoor and outdoor as well, I grow them at work, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, wow. they were, you know, got bombarded with all the plants there, too. Well, you know what's interesting about <laughs> orchids? My mom, when she was alive, loved orchids. Absolutely loved orchids. And there's a... I mean, you have to have a green thumb. To, yeah, they're to not easy. Even they say they're easy, but they're, they're you know, they need a lot of care and love to now, get them are to grow you, and bloom. Are you doing this on a professional basis where you grow them and then you sell them to somebody like Costco? No, we're, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a hobbyist. So You're I grow, a hobbyist. Yes, so I grow at home for my own pleasures. For your own pleasure. Yes. So how many orchid plants would you have right now at home? Oh my God! So I have over a hundred different orchids at home already. In all different varieties. Different different variety species, different hybrids, just a lot. What what got you into being uh, an aficionado of orchids? Ever How did since that happen? I was a kid, I loved nature and I loved plants a lot. So I've been growing since I was basically in a diaper. I tell my mom she thought I was crazy. I'll be so I was a little kid. I wanted to grow plants. So well, good to for this you. Day. Does that mean though that you would want to turn it into a business? Would that ever? Yeah, eventually. Uh, that would be nice. Would you have like a? Do they grow in hot houses? You actually know so. Quite a few of me grow outdoor here on the central coast, like Cymbidium orchids do really well outside. Uh -huh. uh, Zygopetalum orchid does really good outside here. Oncidiums do good outside under the trees, of course. You have to have shade, not full sun. They do really well on the coast. Wow. Yeah, wow. outdoors year round. Yeah. And you're from the city of Hollister. Yes. Now, are you growing them in Hollister? Yes, because we, we're close enough to the coast where we just get the right cool down at night that the orchids need a lot of the ones that i grow so it cools down just enough to trick and in, in, induce flowering uh -huh. and healthy growing a lot of orchids do not like the heat so if you live in sacramento san jose you have a harder time growing with the heat so it's better to grow indoor in a hotter climate i've noticed when i go to costco yeah and i buy an orchid to bring home that it lasts for maybe uh, a month, a month mm -hmm. and a half, two months, and then one by one, the little orchids start falling off. Yeah. And then all I have left is a plant and just where the orchids used to be. Yeah. Is there a way to revive that? Yeah. Orchid? So patience and love. Patience they all, and love. Yes, patience and love. So they all have like 
they all have a blooming season. So some are spring bloomers, some are fall bloomers, and some are summer bloomers. And they only bloom once a year sometimes. Ah. The flowers on some types can last almost, you know, three or four months. That's, yeah, I guess. In full bloom. Yeah. yeah. And hold their flowers up very well. So. And, but one of the things, there's always a little piece of paper inside the, oh, with the. With the, the uh, care tags. The care tag. And, terrible. and it's like. Yeah. And They're I know. No help to anyone. I don't know when to water it or when not to water it. <laughs> I know. It. It's so tricky. Once a week when the orchids approach dryness, it's usually about once a week. If your orchids aren't drying out within a week, you have to repot them. Oh. So they ventilate better, so they dry within a week. Oh, if see, they're not drying out within a week and they're staying wet too long, your roots rot. Uh, and your plant wilts. You are. You know what? That's you it. should be doing a TV show about orchids. Yeah, showing well. I know how to repot them, grow them, split them, divide, do divisions. Oh, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, the orchid lot. lady. I'm gonna just rename her tonight. The <laughs> orchid lady. We have a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish you had some pictures with you. Oh, I know. I was. Uh, I have a lot yeah. that are blooming right now. My Miltoniopsis are blooming. They smell like roses. They oh, smell amazing. Wow. They're the, the pansy orchid. You're, how fascinating is this? And I didn't even know any of this yeah, until right now. Yeah, a lot right of them you could grow outdoors. A lot of the orchids that they sell at Trader Joe's, the Oncidiums, you could grow them outside under your tree. There's a trick to it. You know, you can't over, everyone wants to take them home and get them out of the pots and repot them right away. That's usually a no-no. Uh -huh. Because if you do that right away, you lose your flowers. You could shock the plant. Uh -huh. So it's best to let them acclimate to your house first and start growing before you repot. There you go. Yeah. See, all these tips. And you guys tonight <laughs> didn't even know that you were going to find all this out on this show, Monterey on Tonight, with Lindsay, my co-host. How about that? Jeez, thanks, Lindsay. That was great. I mean, I could have never expected that great opening tonight. <laughs> Lindsay, the orchid lady, is our co-host tonight. Well, let's get started with our first music video. And I think this is Lionel Richie. Am I right, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go play Lionel Richie, and we'll be back in a couple of videos. Hey, how about that video? That's uh, Andrea Bocelli and Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a great video. I mean, that, that music that we're playing on this show is really, really different than you see on this channel most of the time because the other music videos that are here 24-7 um, little different kind of music but I specifically asked my sister Marlene let's pick out some music that everyone would enjoy so we hope you're part of everyone out there that enjoy the music you're watching Monterey on tonight we're here every Sunday night from 6 to 9 p.m. And uh, tonight my co-host is Lindsay, and I'm learning more about Lindsay during the breaks of the music. Lindsay was out today. Were you whale watching? Well, we were out at um, out on the beach at Seascape, and we seen lots of dolphins today. Dolphins, uh, Seascape. Like ten bottlenose dolphins with their calves playing around and feeding. Uh -huh. That was exciting. Now, did you get a recording of any of that? Well, we attempted to, but as soon as he launched the drone, they kind of scattered out and went into diving behavior because they were feeding. So they started uh -huh. diving down below to go for the fish that they were going after. I think there were probably flounders down below on the bottom. So they're doing a lot of deep diving. So it was really hard to get a, any any anything on frame. Yeah. yeah, they were just deep. Deep. Like, too deep to see. So as soon as he puts the drone away. Uh huh. And that she's talking about Frankie, who you're going to meet later tonight. As soon as you put the drone away, guess what happens? They all came out. Yep. They all come right up to the beach and start playing and jumping and circling around. Oh, my goodness. What a tease. Yeah. It's kind of predictable. Wow. I told them that would happen. <laughs> they knew. I swear. They, they knew you know. guys were going to leave. Yeah. And so then they said, wait, wait a minute. Don't <laughs> leave. Stay here and take our picture. Right. And then, yeah, when we have to leave, then they all come in and tease us. I'm like, put the drones away. <laughs> and then... Uh -huh. Earlier in April, we were on the shore near Point Point Lobos, and we seen uh -huh. uh, killer whales uh -huh. out. Yeah, right so off they, Point Lobos. So now you love marine biology. Oh, right? absolutely! Yeah. Uh -huh. Ever since I was a kid, I was always inspired by the ocean and loved it. Had an uh -huh. affinity for it. Do you have a catalog of stills that you've taken of 
animals mm. on on the beach and so forth? No, I don't. But I do go out there a lot on the whale watching boats and go out whale watching. And the ladies that do the research have catalogs of the killer whales ah. and individual humpback whales and the population along the west coast. I know you are the person to ask this question. Hmm. What is the best time of year? when you are on the Monterey Peninsula to go whale watching? Well, pretty much we have good whale watching year round here. We do. We have whales and dolphins year round here in Monterey Bay. Um, it depends on what you want to see. So we get, you know, we get killer whales in the springtime from, you know, April to May. And they're out here to hunt the gray whale calves that are migrating up along the coast. So that's a good time to see killer whales. And they often get really friendly too. And sometimes they do. We'll, we'll be floating out there and they'll put the the boat in neutral and the whales will come right up to the boat they will yeah they're really friendly so they know that you're out there watching them, yeah right? yeah they'll stop what they're doing and go out of their way and come right up to the boat and we're just floating out there and they'll swim by and look up at us spy hop and um also the humpback whales on the other hand are really fun too so they're interesting to watch in the summer so they they arrive you know most of them start arriving back from their uh, breeding grounds in mexico the humpbacks come here like april to November mostly, and they're okay. here to feed. They come to Monterey Bay to feed, and you can see them sometimes, you know, lunch feeding out here in Monterey Bay. It's really uh -huh. cool when the anchovies come in yeah. during that time of the year, this other lunch feeding, and that's fun to see. And also what's interesting about the humpback whales that we see in Monterey Bay in the springtime is that when um, the killer whales hunt down the gray whale calves and sometimes have, the humpbacks uh -huh. will come in and get agitated, and they'll start trumpeting and spending hours of their time trying to prevent a predation oh, or guard wow, a calf wow, wow, of another species of oh, whale. Wow. So the biologists are starting to study this and they're trying to see maybe this is altruism in the humpback whales. Cause you know, dolphins have gone out of their ways to rescue um, people from sharks or drowning. And that's yeah. actually happened here off Marina a surfer back, I think in 2012, there was a surfer named Todd Endress and he was attacked by a great white shark off Marina Beach and a pot of bottlenose dolphins came down racing down the coast and there was a research boat out there that was watching those dolphins before they started racing down the coast. They said, that's odd. Why are the dolphins stop eating and just race down the coast to the beach? The little boat followed them towards the shore there and they started circling. They couldn't really see what was going on. They were circling the surfer in the water and they were jumping over his head, jumping really tight. And he, you know, he was a, he got attacked by a shark, uh -huh. and so the dolphins came and were circling around trying to prevent a second, you know, a, a second secondary attack. attack on, oh wow! Yeah, so they they helped save Gee his life. Whiz. Yeah, fascinating. And the biologists were out there. They were um, that was many years ago. I think it was like yeah, 2012. I think it was. You've got a fascination for this, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You oh, really absolutely. Do. It a is passion. fascinating. Yeah, you the animals are very fascinating. Just. Seeing that a hump, another species will come and try and help another species out. Isn't that amazing? I mean, they stop feeding and go out of their way. They'll spend hours. It's a lot of energy for them to, you know, put out to help another wow. species. It's I amazing. never expected when I asked Lindsay to be a co-host <laughs> that she would know this much about marine biology <laughs> and, and orchids. Yes. Two for one here tonight. Yeah. Thank you, You're Lindsay. You're welcome. <laughs> well, let's go uh, play a couple of more videos, and then I'm going to bring my first guest on for the show tonight. His name is Jack Peterson. We're going to have some fun with Jack, former on-air DJ many years ago at K-Wave. So um, let's play some videos, and then we'll say bye to you for a little bit, and then we'll have you back. Okay. Let's go play the music. And we're back, and this is Monterey on tonight, and Lindsay is back. <laughs> and we're going to be here for the next couple of hours more music and more guests tonight. Wasn't uh, that interview with Jack interesting? Yes, very interesting. Have very you ever met anyone that's caught razor blades in their mouth? No. That's a first. <laughs> that's a first. And it's, it's the first time I've met, as I said on air, first time I've met anyone that's ever been on national television, like, you know, the Johnny Carson show or the David Letterman show. Jack Peterson right here in Monterey, California, former mm -hmm. K-Wave on air, and now working for the Monterey County Board of Education. And the gentleman sitting behind uh, the controls tonight, one of them uh, is a student. Are you a student? Uh, yeah. You are a student. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dylan uh, Holmes 
is here along with his sister and uh, Mark Carbonero is here. Uh, they're sitting in uh, the controls. I call it the cockpit of our master control facility that makes all of this magic happen. And uh, <laughs> it was just like a shock because Jack came in and sat down. I goes, oh, hi, Dylan. <laughs> yeah, well, they're together there at MCOE. And uh, what is the department, Dylan, called that you guys are in there? Uh, so it's McKate. McKate. Uh, yeah. And what does McKate stand for? Uh, Media Center for Arts, Entertainment, and Technology. Ah, Media Center for Arts and Entertainment Technology. Right here in Monterey, California. Actually, though, I'm wrong. It's Salinas that they're in. They're not in Monterey, right? Yeah, it's the Monterey County Office of Ed Building, but it's located in Salinas. It, uh, see how confusing things are? Yeah. That is, that's very confusing, Dylan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're in Salinas, but it's the Monterey County. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, did I say it's Monterey on tonight? And we're here till 9 o'clock tonight, and we do this every week uh, from 6 to 9 o'clock. This show is available to you live, streaming at KMBYTV.com. And then we're going to do something very special. In fact, when the show's over tonight, i got to talk to Dylan about this. We're going to load all of these shows. I believe we can play the music, too. We're going to put them on YouTube. So if you want to go back, especially the guests want to send the shows out to their friends, you'll be able to send the show out to your friends, mm -hmm. and they can watch it on YouTube oh, be more than anytime happy. they want. <laughs> and when this show's finished tomorrow, we'll have a link for you, Lindsay, okay. and you'll be able to send the link out. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> and you can send it to your friends in San oh, your, yeah. your friends and uh, co-workers mm -hmm. in San Jose, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I call her now the orchid, orchid lady. Because she knows more about orchids than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> Thank you. And she knows Still a learning. lot about marine biology, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I learned a lot in those two segments we did. We have to enter into that. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test to see if there's anyone out there watching tonight because we have a phone line that's connected to the outside world here. It's 831-375-1919. There it is on the screen. And for the first person that calls in tonight, we're going to give you two tickets to the Monterey Bay. No, it's not Monterey Bay Aquarium. It's the Santa Cruz Boardwalk. We'll have some um, aquarium tickets, too, coming up. But uh, this is for the Santa Cruz Boardwalk over in Santa Cruz. And all day rides, you can go on the, on the roller coaster and have a ball and uh, stay there all day. So uh, 375-1919, give us a call. And while we're waiting for you to call, we're going to play some more music videos right here on Monterey on tonight. <laughs> so let it go. Hey, how about that? Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful world. And uh, tonight, it's a wonderful night. Thank you so much for tuning in to Monterey on tonight. My guest host tonight is Lindsay mm -hmm. De Los Reyes. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yes. And that's hard to remember, Delos Reyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, while we were watching the videos together, Lindsay and I found out we have something in common. You know what it is? Yorkies. Love. She's Love got Yorkies. a Yorkie, and so do we. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Your Yorkie is what? Scooby. That was Scooby. And we have Jojo and Rosie. <laughs> Yours is a lot bigger though 17 pounder he's a big guy 17 pounds <laughs> ours are five pounds and three pounds so they're little tiny yorkies but um, there is and i'll tell you i know there's a lot of breeds out there and a lot of people love their poochies mm -hmm. but you can't beat a yorkie mm -mm. they don't they're, shed oh their personalities are larger than life they are and they're, they're lovable bold, very and super snuggly oh snuggly and well <laughs> You know, I, I was just telling Lindsay when I'm watching TV, they are both on my lap <laughs> and they won't move. They love daddy and they love to sit on my lap. They don't want you to go anywhere. No, nope. I can't even get up. Nope. No, they, they get, lock they you look, down. They look at me like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Anyway, so, you know, everybody loves their animals, but really you have a, a, a wonderful fascination for a, the, the Yorkie. Uh, 
pedigree. Mm-hmm. And uh, absolutely, just neat, neat doggies. Beautiful. So we're going to find out between now and nine o'clock tonight what other things we have in common <laughs> besides Yorkies. Lindsay uh, was uh, down at the KMBY 87th anniversary party last Saturday. That's where we met Mm -hmm. on the 23rd of July. And I said to her, come on down, uh, be a co-host next week. She's here tonight. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman who you will meet in the last hour of tonight's show, they have kind of a little, you know, love affair. (laughs) How long have you guys been dating? Two years. Two years. So you're going to meet Frankie during the uh, 8 o'clock hour. Mm-hmm. i got to take a sip. Something just got in my throat. Wow. That's a first. <laughs> I just went dry. But anyway, this is live TV. Anything can happen. You know, so far, I guess there's no one that wants to go to the Santa Cruz Boardwalk because no one called. <laughs> so if you know someone out there in TV land, Tell them to call 831-375-1919 and we'll give you two tickets to the boardwalk. Let's go play some more music. Hey, we're back. This is Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris and sitting next to me is my second hour guest. This is Frankie James. How's Welcome, it going? Frankie. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing great, and uh, thank you for loaning us Lindsay tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. I think she did a pretty good job. She's doing a great job. We met last Saturday at the KMBY 87th anniversary down on Cannery Row. Frankie was there because he's got a, a background in music, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, Lindsay was there along with him, and uh, I've got an eye for beauty, and I said, Can we ask your girlfriend if she could be a co-host on the Monterey on Tonight Show? And he said, yeah, I'll give you permission. I thought you were talking about me. Well, no, 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 no. We we are looking for beautiful women to be our co-hosts. And uh, you brought Lindsay along at the anniversary party, and I couldn't help but say, can can we use her as a as a co-host on her show? And he said, sure. So, anyway, Frankie's got a great background in music, and bands, and Sammy Hager, and so why don't you start telling me how did you get into the music business, Frankie? Wow, that goes uh, so that goes back a, a now, few years. Now here's what you got to do: you got to get a little closer up to the mic, yeah, so we don't lose you. All right, All right there you can we hear go. me now. Yeah, All we right. hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah, so it goes back quite a few years, actually, um, when I was in productions uh, back in the early 90s, all the way through the 2000s, and um, and that's kind of how the whole thing started. So and were you working in music? Were, are you a musician? No, no, I'm not a musician. But you're a photographer. I am a, a photographer. professional photographer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and Frankie had his camera down on Cannery Row at the party and click, click, click. And, you know, it's it's amazing today because there's no more film. That's true. Everything is digital. And yeah. so you've got, you had a beautiful Canon. Was yours a no, Canon? No, I use all Nikon gear. Nikon. Okay. I thought it was a Canon. I don't know why. But uh, he it's, uses all Nikon Canon's gear. Canon's a great camera as well. Yeah. But he's behind the stage now. When you've got your groups out, you're also doing photography. You showed me some shots of the bands and the performance. Yeah. When they're on stage, you're there. You're taking shots of them. And now, do you publish those? I do. Um, they're either, uh, well, I publish them as well as give them to the, the labels or the publicists or the bands that, that hired me for them. And do you work this area primarily, uh, the Monterey, Salinas area? F- for music or do you go beyond this area no actually i don't do any of it um locally here you don't you know everything is is out of the area so like where do you go for well i've gone everywhere from you know las vegas uh to san francisco sacramento seattle um and overseas um the netherlands finland belgium wow uh yeah just all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Wow. What an interesting gig. I love it. Yeah. You're living the life, man. I And, I, you know, it's not often that you love what you do. Yeah. I love what I do. Well, me too. Yeah. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got in the broadcasting business, just because I loved broadcasting. 
Hey, you got to meet uh, Chris and uh, Denise White, who were our hosts at the uh, KMBY Radio uh, 87th anniversary party last week on Canary Row. And uh, Frankie was telling me that uh, he's also connected with Sammy Hager. Tell us about that. Well, actually, Sammy Hager Radio. Radio. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which is owned by Chris, Chris. White. Right. Yes, as well as Cabo Wabo Radio. Cabo Wabo Radio. Right. Yeah. And uh, we've kind of merged the two together. We're doing a relaunch with it. We're making a lot of big changes. Uh-huh. Um, all for the good, of course. Right. Um, we're making it a lot more interactive uh, with the fans. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to have a lot of presence uh Around the music industry, around the festival area, we're going to be there um, in force with our pop-up tents and to do giveaways and I love giveaways. live interviews with some of the rock stars, things like that. Oh, great. Yeah. Great, great, great. What would be the next big thing that you have on your agenda coming up? Probably the launch. I mean, this is all pretty new, although um, Sammy Hagar Radio and Cabo Wabo Radio has been around since 2007, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. Um, it's uh, stayed in the same format um, at, you know, up until now, and wow. there hasn't been any changes made to it. And So, so you're making changes now. To, and how are we going to listen to this uh, particular well there's phone station. apps that are available now as mm -hmm. well on on uh, apple and android uh we're working on alexa that should be live pretty soon okay. as well and that'll okay. hit i forgot how many million 128 oh, yeah. million ohms so you would just say alexa play cabo wabo radio or sammy hagar radio i guess you could yeah once yeah. that once it goes live um and of, of course the sammy uh, radio.com as well That's so it. Internet Can we radio, go online so. now to SammyRadio.com? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and it's a great station. We play a great genre of rock and roll, uh, pure classic rock and roll as well. And uh, everything from Van Halen to Joe Satriani to some of the old rock and roll from back in the 80s back with in the, the 80s. Ronnie Montrose. And, yeah. The good old days. The good old days, yeah. yeah. Are you on air yourself? No. You no. don't do a I no I'm a I'm, jock shift. I'm on the media side. You're on the back side. Yes, yeah, so I'm not on the yeah, broadcast behind side. stage. They say. Yeah, I'm right. a behind the scenes guy. Yeah. Well, you know, we're working with Frankie right now, and I say we, William Ricketts and I, who is in the green room tonight. We're trying to see if we can put together an Ed Ricketts festival for here in Monterey, and Frankie's going to help us find the right act. That'll bring the young people in mm -hmm. to the Canary Row area so we can have an Ed Ricketts Festival. And we're just in the formative stages, you know, because William Ricketts is a shirt tail relative of good old Ed Ricketts, who was down on Canary Row. Some people called him Doc Ricketts. This is many, many years ago. He was in the John Steinbeck book, mm -hmm. Canary Row, Ed Ricketts was. And we're trying to keep the name alive. William has really put some effort into this, and I'm trying to help as much as I can. And we're meeting with the Canary Row Company, uh, Eric, next week, Eric Upman, to see if we can make something happen, which would be an annual event held on Canary Row once a year in July. That's the kind of date that we're, we're looking at. And it would be completely free, you know, come on down to Canary Row, watch the concert. We've kicked around some names, Frankie and I. Throw out some names that you and I have talked <laughs> oh about. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Maggie Lindemann's one. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the li rest of the you list in front of You don't have the list in front of you. No, I was I don't unprepared. Know these, oh I, don't, I don't really know these young artists' names very well. I watched the Today Show mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Fridays when they have the young people come in for their performance as a Rockefeller Center, and they've got a lot of young names, artists that, again, I, I haven't heard of, but every all the young people know who they are. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're going to try and find is that one kind of artist that when you say she's going to be performing or he's going to be performing on Cannery Row at the Ed Ricketts Festival, come on down, free admission, just walk on in. 
I think we should be able to draw a pretty good crowd. I think so. I think it's a great idea as well. Yeah. Uh, to bring family unity back to Monterey, I yeah. think, is very, yeah. very important for the success And, you know, Canary River is the, a great spot to have something like Absolutely. that because there's a lot of room. We have to get permission from the, the city of Monterey to close off the streets. But it'll be a crowd, and it'll be a fun day, hopefully, sometime in July. Looking forward to 2023 to do that. And it's all because this guy is going to help us. Because without contacts to the music, the music is the key. Whoever the performer is going to be is the key. And as you said, maybe we can get a couple of performers. It's possible. And, well, that's, you know, a small part of it as well. I mean, there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes uh, on yeah. with you guys. and Well, promotion. The, promotion is Organizing part of it. the festival as but, well. But getting a stage built and getting the mm -hmm. sound system and getting the lighting and, and all the ancillary that goes with it, security, um, it's a big deal. It'll be a collaborative effort of a lot of great minds, I think. There you, I love that. Yeah. Did you hear what he said? A collaborative effort of a lot of great minds. Whoa! <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Anything else you want to plug? Um, no, I think that's good right okay. there. I mean, uh, waiting for the launch of uh, semiradio.com, and that should happen hopefully next week. We got a lot of contests uh, included there. And a lot of I like when you said giveaways. We do have some uh, swag giveaways oh, that we're going to do. Yeah. People and, love uh, stuff for nothing. You know? That's so true. Yeah. And that concert for Doc Ricketts yeah. is going to be something for nothing. And that's going to be an amazing See, thing. you know, that's the key. If you can tell people, come on down, no charge. I mean, why wouldn't you go? Yeah. Why wouldn't you go? And, it, and we really want some young people because a lot of young people have no idea who Ed Ricketts was. That's true. And he was quite a guy. If you go read the book Canary Row that was written by Steinbeck, who you know was born over in Salinas, mm -hmm. you would read about how these two guys were uh, basically best of buds. And the poor Doc Ricketts was going down through Pacific Grove there uh, on the what used to be the railroad track. And the train ran into his car because he had a rickety old car, and it stalled on the tracks, and it killed him. And he was a young wow. guy when that yeah, happened. Yeah, that's crazy. A lot of people don't know that about Doc Ricketts, or Ed Ricketts. He really wasn't a doctor, but someone gave him that handle, you know, Doc. Of course, I guess that's probably complimentary to be called a Doc. And it's Doc. And it's Doc all these years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So keep that in mind. Check... Uh, uh, the papers and uh, listen to the radio and watch this show and you'll hear all about the upcoming festival, hopefully, for next July of 2023. Hopefully that'll happen. The Ed Ricketts Festival. And this guy right here is going to be responsible for getting all of the music. We'll do the promotion. Frankie's <laughs> going to do the music. And the music is important. It's important. Very important. Frankie, thank you so much for being here tonight. Absolutely. It's and been my pleasure. Good to see you. It's good to see Thanks you, Thanks for loaning us Lindsay for the evening. You can still have her a little bit longer. <laughs> We're here till 9 o'clock. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Let's go Absolutely. play some more music. <laughs> Monterey thank on so tonight. Much. Thank you so much. It was much. good. Hey, we're watching Monterey on tonight, and while the video was playing, we had a caller for, and I just put it in my phone so I wouldn't forget it, uh, who um, actually was uh, a caller for the Santa Cruz Boardwalk. And so she gets uh, two tickets. Her name is Nicole Espinoza. Mm -hmm. you do, do you know her? Yes, I do. She's watching because Lindsay's the co-host. And so mm -hmm. she got two free tickets to the Santa Cruz Boardwalk. So if you guys want some goodies from this show, write down the number, put it somewhere. And then when you hear me say we're, we're giving something away, this is the number you dial, 831-375-1919. This is Lindsay, my co-host tonight. She's going to be here till 9 o'clock. We have one more guest coming on in the next hour. So uh, keep your TV tuned to KMBY Channel 19.4 over the air with an antenna. Or keep watching streaming at KMBYTV.com. Very simple. Mm -hmm. All you got to do, in fact, 
I showed Lindsay how we do this. We go to Safari. This is an iPhone. We put in KMBY TV. And right here, let's see if I get the, you should be able to see us pop up on the screen. There we are. <laughs> That's how you do it. And tell your friends. KMBY TV. Do you see us here? Look at that. Oh, yeah. We're live That's right cool. now. Everywhere in the world on the internet. <laughs> Amazing. Just technology has changed so much. Anyway, we're having fun. Uh, Monterey on tonight, 6 to 9 o'clock every week. Let's see, Sundays, uh, yeah, Sundays only. In fact, people have said to me, can you do repeats during the week? And I said, well, yeah, maybe we can. Maybe we can run this show again during the week so people that missed it tonight will see it another night and then we're working on putting these shows on youtube so you'll be able to go to monterey on tonight on youtube and you'll see show one two three four five and this is six this is our sixth show we started on the 26th of june can't believe it it's 7 35 in the evening it's sunday night we're going to play another great music video and get ready for our next guest in the next hour so stay tuned. Let's go play some more music. What do you say? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank Here we go. And that's Olivia Newton-John and Hopelessly Devoted to You. And, Lindsay, I have to tell you a story about that. Okay. I saw the movie Grease when mm -hmm. it first came out with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. And I thought when I saw it, and this is like 30 years ago, I thought it was one of the best movies I had ever seen. And, of course, when I first saw Olivia Newton-John, I fell in love of with course. Olivia Newton-John. Just could not. Say, oh, my God. Stunning. Stunning Absolutely lady. Stunning. Beautiful, beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And here we are all these years later now. And that's the clip from the movie. And it still resonates to me. Hopelessly devoted to you. Now, when did you first hear that song? Me? How many years ago? Do you remember? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. It was so long ago it's when I saw that movie. Time, yeah. I was probably, you know, about 12 years old, maybe uh, 13. And how did Grease, when you first saw it as a young lady, how did you like that movie? It was a really good movie. Uh, Excellent. You I loved did, it. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, it was really good. One of my all time favorites, Grease. Mm -hmm. And you know, today, still today, when they play that movie, it just gets. All young people now, because it's like the first time a 12-year-old today sees that movie. And the music, I mean, it had such great, great songs. And uh, the actors and the actresses that were in that movie, uh, Grease, uh, some of them now have passed. Mm -hmm. they've passed. They've gone to the other side. But the movie still has what it takes. Frankie Avalon, who's... I was talking about Frankie last week on the, the show because we have a tie with Frankie. Frankie came to my home in Fresno when he was in his 20s, same age as me, so that's a long time ago. And my mom cooked spaghetti dinner for Frankie Avalon and his wife. And he said, you know, your spaghetti, your mom's spaghetti, is as good as my mom." So how about that? And he sings High School Dropout in the Grease movie. Well, you got to dig that one up, Dylan, and play High School Dropout. Could you think you could find that for yeah. me and play that High School Dropout? Because that is a neat, neat video. Frankie Avalon and High School Dropout. From yeah. Is it there? Uh, we're searching it. Oh, you guys search it up. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I don't want to confuse you because I know we have lists of music and but maybe on the, after the next video, we could play it. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's go to whatever you have left uh, on the list because we have quite a few more. Uh, we're getting close to the 8 o'clock hour. My next guest will be on about 8.15 tonight. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll go find that video and play that high school dropout by Frankie Avalon. Okay? Let's do that. Uh, that was great. High school dropout. That was Frankie Avalon from the movie Grease. Thank you guys for digging that out. Just I started talking about it, and then they went and found it so we could play it for the audience. Do you remember that? Yeah, you do? I do. From yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. A long time. She was, 
She was 12 years old when that <laughs> movie was out. She went to see Grease. Mm -hmm. And some parts she's forgotten. Yeah, it's yeah, been a but, while. <laughs> <laughs> but some parts she remembers as we played uh, some of the clips tonight from uh, the movie Grease. The Olivia Newton-John, hopelessly devoted to you, which was one of my favorites. And now Frankie Avalon. Incidentally, you know, you're sitting out there, you're watching the show, you're watching the music that we pick, but we'd like to hear from you. Why don't you uh, send us an email, gary at KMBY-TV, and say, hey, Gary, how about playing this or that? Because, you know, uh, I don't know what your favorites may be, so let us know, and we'll see if we can get it on the air on one of next week or the week after the show. Do you have any favorites? Who, who are... Who are some of your favorite artists, Lindsay? Me? Yeah. Um, Who do you like to listen to? Um, let's see. I like a lot of classic rock. Classic rock. Um, yeah. What kind of, you know, is there a favorite I love Led group? Zeppelin. Led I Zeppelin. Like, All um, right. Um, let's see what else. I know I'm putting you <laughs> on the spot. There's a lot spot. of stuff. There's like so many bands and things I listen to. Um, like a lot of reggae. Reggae. Um, so here's what yeah. I'm going to ask Lindsay to do for next week's show. You have to go pick out mm -hmm. a video that okay. you really like. And then next week when we play the video on the show, I'm going to say, oh, and this video coming up is Lindsay, our last week's co-host's favorite video. Okay. Will you do that? Yes, absolutely. All right. Then we'll yes. see. And you'll <laughs> actually have residual value. Mm -hmm. meaning you were here tonight, but next week we'll even talk about Lindsay De La Reyes. De mm -hmm. La... De Los Reyes. Do, do, <laughs> yes. Help me again. De Los Reyes. De Los Reyes. Yes. I think you're actually the most difficult mm -hmm. co-host last name that I've had to, to remember. <laughs> that was always hard in school, too. Was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you ever think about changing it? No. no, just shorten it, just make it raise. It'd be easier. Yeah, but, but you know what? Hmm. When you get married, you'll have a whole oh, new yeah. last name. So besides the guy who might be out in the other room, <laughs> uh, if it's anybody else, just say, well, let's see. Now, do I like this name? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie's going to go, what? <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> We're having fun. It's 8 o'clock right here in Monterey, California. I hope it's 8 o'clock where you are. If you're on the East Coast, it's 11 o'clock at night because you can watch us. We've got family in Atlanta hopefully watching the show if they're still up. Uh, the grandkids, they probably have gone to bed in Atlanta. But uh, if you're out there watching, let us know. Let us hear from you. 831-375-1919. We'd love to talk with you. In fact, we might even put you on the air and you can tell us how you like the show. Simple. 831-375-1919. Monterey on tonight. I am Gary Morris. That's my stage name from many years ago when I was on KMBY Radio on Cannery Row where it's a refreshing 68 degrees right now. On Gorgeous. Was it? What a beautiful evening out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Okay, back to the music. What do we have next, guys? Mariah Carey. Ah, this is a great one. This is Mariah. She's one of my favorite artists, too. So <laughs> let's go play Mariah. There she is, the diva herself, Mariah Carey. <laughs> Lindsay and I were talking about the diva Mariah Carey just now. But that's a great song. You know what? We're going to play right now one of my favorite Frank Sinatra songs, kind of the story of his life and his career, uh, My Way. And it gives me an opportunity to plug KMBY's Sundays with Sinatra with David Marzetti, who plays all of the Sinatra songs and some of Frank's friends between 6 a.m. and noon. They go live from the Fisherman's Grotto on KMBY on Sundays from 10 to noon. So if you're out and about, you like Fisherman's Wharf? Love. Okay. Love Lindsay loves Fisherman's <laughs> Wharf. So do I. I love the Fisherman's mm -hmm. Grotto. Chris Shake's place down there. And incidentally, Teeny Shake 
Chris's brother is going to be a guest in the next couple of weeks here. Maybe I think it's next week. Not sure. But uh, stop by and say hi to David. He sits in the window right at the Fisherman's Grotto and plays Sundays with Sinatra music because it's all Frank Sinatra and his friends. Dino, Dean Martin, and uh, no Tony Bennett, though. And there's a story about that. Right, Mark? Yes. <laughs> no Tony Bennett on Sundays with Sinatra. And when you get over there to the Fisherman's Grotto, say, Hey, David, how come you don't play any Tony Bennett? He'll tell you why. Okay? Let's go play the great Frank Sinatra and my way. Well, we're back. This is Monterey on tonight, and this is my next guest, Elise Rochford. Did I say it right? You did. Rochford. Very well pronounced. And I'll tell you what I've got to do. Because she is probably, she has more music background than anyone we've had on this show. May I read Elise Rochford, multi-instrumentalist, plays a variety of styles suited to any occasion. Elise is a well-known performer and musical director in the Monterey Bay area. For nearly a decade, she toured with the Three Tenors. The Three Tenors! How about that? Pavarotti, Carreras, and Domingo, traveling major cities of the world and sold-out venues. And she's recently returned to the Monterey area and is available for special events. She works as a soloist with backing tracks for a one-woman show that will take you away on a musical cruise around the world to Spain, Hollywood, Italy, the Mediterranean, and the British Isles, from where you may never return. Elise. Gary. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. I am so honored to have you here tonight. Well, thank you. It's you great are to by be here. far our greatest musical entertainer that we have had on this little show. <laughs> and it's so nice to meet you. And we met because of the Monterey Pops. Tell us how you're connected to the Monterey Pops. Well, the Monterey County Pops, um, I do PR and marketing for them, and I occasionally sing with the band, and um, we have all kinds of events coming up. Uh, Labor Day, we do first night, uh, we just did a 4th of July concert, and um, it's really been wonderful organization working with them. Um, our mission statement is that we provide music education for underserved youth in Monterey County and free concerts for families That's and visitors wonderful. to the Monterey Peninsula. That is wonderful. That's wonderful. And you've given me some names of board members of the Monterey Pops, so we're going to have them on as guests and they can talk about the Monterey Pops and what's going on right here in Monterey. Yeah. Now, how did you get involved with the Monterey Pops? How did that happen? Well, um, years ago, I performed. Uh, we did concerts, um, uh, Festa Italia concerts, and I've known Dr. Carl Christensen for a long time and uh, various classical music concerts around the peninsula. And, uh, of course, attending our 4th of July concert annually, um, and Memorial Day concerts at the Naval Postgraduate School. And so they've been around for quite a while. And you've been in the music business for a long time. Yes, I have. Yeah. Tell mm -hmm. me about what it was like touring when you were touring with the three tenors. Well, it was really interesting um, because I moved back to the Peninsula in 1994. Mm. And I was perusing through the want ads one day, and I see this little ad that says, uh, Music Librarian Wanted. Uh, music I, Librarian? Yes. Yeah. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what that is. Yeah. So uh, on the way to the interview, I met with a colleague, a uh, music teacher, and she said, well, at least you know where you're going. And I said, yeah, I'm going across the street to check out this music librarian position. Uh -huh. And she said, well, do you know you're going to Luciana Pavarotti's production office? Okay. No, I didn't know that. So I went across the street, interviewed for the job, and I uh, worked with them for the next 10 years. Ah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I was very fortunate. Many years ago, 
I was in Vancouver for New Year's Eve, Vancouver, British Columbia, mm -hmm. and I saw the three tenors live in concert on New Year's Eve. Mm. And I even got an umbrella, a three tenors umbrella, and a jacket that says three tenors. Ooh. Isn't that, that's pretty neat, right? I yeah. Mean, I usually am not a memorabilia collector, mm -hmm. but that was such a fascinating evening. And to hear those three gentlemen uh, in concert was probably a memorable, a, a, a memorable occasion that I will never forget. I bet. Do you still have the jacket? I the still umbrella? have the jacket and the umbrella. I do. Yeah. Great. And I use the umbrella more than I use the jacket. <laughs> but I'd use that three tenors umbrella. That's oh, great. wonderful! Yeah. Do you do you remember when they were up in Vancouver? Were you? Yes, I do. I probably sent the sheet music there ah, because okay. what I would do, I'd prepare the sheet music for the orchestras and send them ahead of time, and so they could have time to rehearse the concert. Ah, that's and, how they do that. Mm -hmm. So, d do they mail that out to uh, to the uh, to the concert? Uh, city ahead of time for the concerts? Yeah, we'd mail it out about three weeks ahead of the concert date, so the local orchestra would have time to rehearse. And then uh, when the tenor showed up, um, they would have a couple of rehearsals. I see. How many How many rehearsals generally for, for those three gentlemen when they were all performing together, how many rehearsals would they have before they went on stage for the event? Would they have one, two, three? How many rehearsals? Oh, sometimes two. Sometimes one, and th is that for? That's not so much for the performers. That's for the orchestra, isn't it? I mean, to get the feel of working with those gentlemen, is that what it's for? A rehearsal? Well, yes, and because it is standard repertoire, um, and the tenors had sung those arias over and over and over again, um, the orchestra had to be all prepared to be able to, you know, play. Um, and those are generally philharmonics that back them up in concert, aren't they? Oh, yes. A full 70-piece orchestra. Um, if you've never been in your life, whoever you are watching this show tonight, to any kind of a concert with a 70-piece philharmonic orchestra, the next time you have the occasion you see one advertised, please go. It is worth every penny. It is an occasion you will never forget. Am I right? It really is. Oh. Yes, it really to is. To hear 70 pieces of musicians playing together simultaneously, it's a knockout. In fact, I go on YouTube mm -hmm. and look for like the Boston Philharmonic. Uh, uh, there's one in Europe. I, it slips my, my mind right now. But they're just fabulous musicians. Well, fabulous. they really, they really are. And uh, when we went to China, went to China uh, in about the year, I think it was two thousand, and uh, the Chinese uh, Western European music really isn't in their blood mm. yet, or it wasn't at the time. And they just loved the music so much. I remember um, one of the our um, guides was at rehearsal and she came to me and she said oh my goodness how do you make such magic with your music it, it makes me so happy in my heart it is. they really were thrilled the, with you know that, um, and that's the word actually elise magic because that's what happens mm -hmm. when you're listening to a, a an orchestra of 70 plus musicians um, and of course, I was fortunate enough to hear the three tenors mm -hmm. while Pavarotti was alive, and that you know was just so memorable. It brought me back when I was a little boy. It brought me back to a man who I just loved as a little boy, Mario Lanza. Oh yes, he had a fabulous voice. He really did. And I, he made movies. Yes. And as a little boy, I wanted to go see Mario Lanza. I bet you, did you ever? I, I did. Now, you know, all of these things remind me of the fact that today with technology, guys, will you go and look and see if there's a Mario Lanza video that we can play 
because I would love to introduce the audience. Most people out there right now go, Mario Lanza. You know, maybe they've heard of the great Caruso, Enrico Caruso, mm-hmm. that went back to the 1920s, I guess. Right. But Mario Lanza was alive and well in the 40s and the 50s mm. when, when I was a little guy. And uh, is there anything you guys can find? We do. We do. What do you have Maybe there? Love. Ah, can't, you know, would that you, was one can of his signature a, songs. Can we take a break and go play Mario Lanza? Absolutely. All right, let's go play Mario Lanza and Be My Love. Mario Lanza. <laughs> we were talking while Mario was singing, Elise and I, about how that particular venue of music is gone. Rachel, you're 15, right? No, I am not. I'm 19. 19. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I, I don't know why I thought you were 15. Maybe it's because you look like you're 15. I don't know. Anyway, Rachel is uh, Dylan's um, Dylan's uh, sister. I'm sorry about that. I got, got a little lost. And uh, she's backing up Dylan and, and Mark tonight on the technicals. Because there's a lot of switches and buttons. And did you see how fast they were able to pull up that Mario Lanza video? Hey, guys, thank you so much. And Elise and I were talking about Mario. There's not a lot of young people today that understand that kind of music. And it's really sad because there was an era, am I right, Mm -hmm. that that was the norm. I mean, that was a movie that was made in the 40s, probably, Mm -hmm. in Technicolor, called... Uh, the Toast of New Orleans with uh, Catherine Grayson and Mario Lanza. And uh, as a little boy growing up, my mom loved Mario Lanza mm-hmm. and loved his music. So thank you guys for, for finding Be My Love. And that's kind of your era with the, with the three tenors. You worked in that kind of music. Well, yes, and uh, Be My Love was Placido Domingo's, one of his arias that he would always sing at our concerts. And uh, you can hear, uh, listening to Mario Lanza's, uh, when he sings traditional operatic arias, you can hear the influence in Placido Domingo's voice, especially, I think. Uh. And um, I didn't start really listening to Mario Lanza's serious um, operatic repertoire until recently, and Oh my gosh, he was on the level of Caruso. Yes, the great Caruso. Really Back stunning in the voice. 1900s, early 1900s. Yeah. But if you know anything at all about operatic music, these guys were like the best. You didn't get any better. Yeah. And, uh, Opera still tenors. is, um, you know, it's a more obscure genre. Yeah. But um, uh, Placido Domingo, for example, has a vocal competition called Operalia. And the final competition I went to um, at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion one year, and the young up-and-coming opera singers were absolutely stunning, just stunning, the voices coming are, from these are young they people. Still, are young people still getting into that line of the business? Yes, they are. They are, mm-hmm, because you have young up-and-coming opera singers in the opera houses. and So, so. Where, where could we right now go on the Monterey Peninsula to hear opera music. Is there some place to go? Well, there isn't a whole lot of opera. Not um, anymore. Not anymore. Uh, San, San Francisco. Francisco okay. San Francisco Opera House, of course. Um, San Jose. Okay. Uh, San Jose Opera. Um, and are they all older folks who go to the opera? Are they getting any young people in? Yeah, you will see uh, San Francisco, New York, you know, the bigger cities, younger people are going and wow. performing in opera. You know, there's, so. a, there's a scene in the movie with uh, my, uh, Richard Gere and uh, Julia Roberts in the movie Pretty Woman when he takes her to the opera. Mm. Do you remember that scene? Yes. And she's in a red dress and he had something in a... Uh, I think it was a necklace, and he opens up the necklace, and she goes for it, and he slams it down, and she goes, oh! She backs up. Great scene <laughs> in the movie, and then they get on the private jet, and they fly to San Francisco to see the opera. What a great scene in Pretty Woman. If you ever watch Pretty Woman again, watch that scene. And they actually went to the opera mm-hmm. and filmed that whole sequence. 
at the Opera in San Francisco. You know, it's yeah. been such a pleasure to have you here tonight. Well, thank you, Gary, for I, having I, me. I, I commend you for your um, beautiful resume of music and your career in music. Uh, we're going to, of course, promote the Monterey Pops, thanks to you. And I'd like to have you back on the show again. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for being here. I'll have tonight, something Elise. to look forward to. Yes, thank you, Elise. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Elise Rochford. I hope I said it right. Rochford, yes. Rochford, okay. <laughs> Elise Rochford. And right here in Monterey. She's right here in town. Okay, let's get back to more music on the Monterey on Tonight show. It's 838. We're here till 9. What's next, guys? Roll it. Callum Scott and Leon Lewis. All right, let's go. Hey, Neil Diamond once again tonight, and I want to thank my sister Marlene, and I know she's choosing the music because she loves Neil Diamond music. So there you go. Marlene, thank you for doing our music for tonight. Now, I'm cutting in to the list because i got to tell you a story. Clint Eastwood, as you know, lives on the Monterey Peninsula, and Clint said something once about, you know, how do you handle, you're getting older, Clint. And he Mm -hmm. says, I don't let the old man in. Meaning, (laughs) you know, go away, old man. So Toby Keith heard that. And so Toby Keith wrote a song based on what Clint said about don't let the old man in. And we're going to play that for you right now. Lindsay, watch this video. All right, there's the Clint Eastwood uh, movie and uh, the reason that uh, that whole song was written was because of Clint and I was just telling Lindsay we're working behind the scenes to get Clint on this little Monterey show how are we going to do that well there's a lady that works at the Mission Ranch who is the hostess and she's going to be a co-host of this show and I'm hoping that she can give me the whereabouts of Mr. Eastwood so that we can at least get him to do a Zoom call with us and have him on the show. Now, will he do it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. He doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed to see if we can get Clint on our Monterey on Tonight show. So will you be watching? Oh, yeah. Lindsay will be watching the night we have Clint on Zoom on this show. (laughs) Okay, let's go play another video, guys. What did we decide? Butterfly Kisses. Butterfly Kisses. Let's go play this one. All right, that's Michael Buble. Uh, Lindsay and I were talking about years ago when I saw this young man in concert in... uh, Miami, Florida. He was like 17 years old, 18 years old. Nobody knew who Michael Bublé was. And I went up after his performance and I said to him, young man, you're going to be a big star someday. And guess what? He became a big star. And I said, do you have an album? And he goes, yeah. I said, can I buy one? And he goes, sure. So I gave him $20. He gave me a CD. And I still have it to this day, and it's going to be a collector's item. Michael Bublé's first album, when nobody knew who he was. And he didn't have the big bands behind him. So, anyway, that's our show for tonight. Monterey on Tonight. We're here every Sunday nights from 6 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Thank you, Lindsay, for being here tonight and being my (laughs) co-host. And uh, next week, we're going to have a V&A Cobian Moreno, who was supposed to be here a few weeks ago, but her dog Sasha got scratched in the eye by a cat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, so she had to take uh, Sasha to the vet. But she's going to be our co host next week. We're going to have more music, great guests, so put it on your calendar. Six o'clock on Sunday nights till nine o'clock, KMBYTV.com if you want to watch it via streaming, or 19.4 over the air with an antenna. Okay? That's it, guys. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Good night, everybody.